Hello, this is Ms. Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to talk about heat flow and enthalpy. Today's essential question, how does heat move through endothermic and exothermic reactions? Okay, we'll start with a quick review of temperature, heat, and kinetic energy. So first off, thermochemistry is the study of energy changes that occur during chemical reactions and phase changes. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. All atoms are in constant motion, which means they have kinetic energy. And the greater the velocity, or you can think of velocity as speed, um, the greater the velocity of movement, the greater the kinetic energy. So atoms with, or molecules with more kinetic energy are going to be moving more. Atoms with less kinetic energy will be moving less. Heat which is symbolized by a Q, is the sum of the kinetic energy in a sample of atoms. The greater the heat, the greater the kinetic energy. The greater the kinetic energy, the greater the movement. So we could skip the kinetic energy step and say that the greater the heat, the greater the movement. Because heat is energy, it's measured in the unit joules, because, and that's because joules is an energy unit. Okay. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of atoms, and the unit used is Celsius or Kelvin. And this is an important one here. Absolute zero, meaning the theoretical lowest possible temperature, absolute zero, is zero degrees Celsius. Or no, sorry, take that back, zero degrees K. Um, and that's the temperature at which there is no molecule movement. And this is a theoretical. Absolute zero is theoretical. All right, chemical reactions and heat. How are, how are those re related? All right, during a chemical reaction, bonds are broken, atoms are rearranged, and new bonds are formed. That's the definition of a chemical reaction, right? You start with one or more substances, you make one or more new substances, and that happens by rearranging the atoms. Most chemical reactions involve changes in energy. And this is because breaking bonds requires the use of energy and formation of bonds releases energy. And this energy flow of releasing and using energy is seen as changes in temperature. Okay, that's how we can actually measure changes in energy by looking at changes in temperature, remembering that this energy is actually heat. Okay, a few terms. We've got something called the system. The system is the thing that we're studying, what we're, what we're actually interested in. And the surround is the environment the system is in, and the things that come in contact with the system. So for example, if we were doing a reaction in a reaction dish, the, the reactants that we put in the dish would be our system, and the reaction dish would be our surround. Okay? In thermochemistry, the direction of heat flow is given from the point of view of the system. So if, if um, we're talking about heat flowing out of the system into the surround, or are we talking about heat flowing into the system from the surround? All right, let's discuss exothermic reactions. So an exothermic reaction is a reaction that releases heat. I remember this as exo is heat is exiting exo, the system, the thing that we're, we're studying. So you want to think of heat as a product. Um, and we have an example here of a combustion reaction of a hydrocarbon um, that produces carbon dioxide, water, and heat. Now, the heat is not going to just sit there in the reaction dish or in the car engine or wherever we're talking about. It's going to float away. So that's why I think of heat as exiting. So during an exothermic reaction, the system, the thing that we're studying, is losing heat to the surround. So we have another example here with... Um, the CO and the O2 being our reactants, and the CO2 is our 
product. And what you'll notice is that the reactants themselves, the atoms of the reactant, or the, the molecules, have greater energy than the molecules of the products. Now, if we go back to the equation, the reactants taken with all of the products have an equal amount of energy. But because we're forming heat and heat's floating away, if we were just to talk about the atoms or molecules themselves, um, the, the reactants have more energy than the products, okay? And the change, this here shows our change in energy, is a negative number because we're losing heat to the surround. In this case, we lost negative 395 kilojoules. So that's an exothermic reaction. Okay, on to endothermic reactions. An endothermic reaction is a reaction that absorbs heat. Endo, I think of that as heat entering the system. Okay, so I remember which one's which. Okay, so heat entering the system. You want to think of heat as a reactant. And here I put the actual heat energy, one, one, three kilojoules, as opposed to putting um, heat either way. All right, so in an endothermic reaction, the system is gaining heat from the surround. Okay, so here, once again, we have our reactants here. And these are our products. Okay. So um, what you can see is that the reactants, the molecules that make up the reactants, have lower energy than the molecules that make up the products. Again, the actual, hmm, that's not going to work, the actual amount of energy on both sides of the equation is the same. But because we're adding heat here, if we just talk about the molecules, this has less energy than those two, okay? So the change here going from reactants to products, the change in energy is a positive number, positive 176 kilojoules. So if you have a positive change in temperature, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, you have an endothermic reaction. If you have a negative change in temperature or in energy, you have an exothermic reaction. And we'll go ahead and end part one of the lecture here. All right, enthalpy. The heat absorbed or released in a reaction depends on the difference in a quantity called enthalpy. The enthalpy of a substance is basically its energy, um, but it's the energy under a particular set of conditions. And like energy, enthalpy of a substance depends on its temperature, its physical state, and its composition, or what it's made up of. The changes in enthalpy is represented by a triangle known as delta H. That triangle in any circumstance means change, change in. Okay, so change in enthalpy, delta H, change in enthalpy. So delta, sorry, the, the triangle is delta. In science, triangle delta is used to represent change or difference. All right, so delta H, something you need to know. The change in enthalpy equals the change in enthalpy of the products minus the change in enthalpy of the reactants, or delta H equals delta H products minus delta H reactants. The delta H of an endothermic reaction will be a positive number, right, because it's absorbing energy. Um, because, and another way to think about it is that the products, we talked about this in the last, in the last lecture, the energy of the mo product molecules is greater in an endothermic reaction than the, the energy of the reactant molecules, okay? 
the um, delta H of an exothermic reaction will be a negative number because you're releasing energy. Okay, thermal chemical equations. Thermal chemical equation is a chemical equation that includes enthalpy or heat energy. So um, here's our normal balanced equation, and here um, is our heat um, written as 802.2 kilojoules. This is an exothermic reaction. Um, we can also, um, if you guys remember like mole mole ratio, we can do, we can come up with an equality using the number of moles of any of these atoms and um, the amount of energy. So for example, this first one here, if we were to compare CH4 and the energy or enthalpy, we would have an equality of one mole CH4 equals 802.2 kilojoules, meaning for every one mole of CH4 used, we will create 802.2 kilojoules. If we were instead to talk about water, for every two mole of water produced, you also produce 802.2 kilojoules. Okay, so this is, this is a new equality. So to predict the amount of energy produced, you can use energy and one of the coefficients from the balanced equation as the equality or conversion factor and then use the factor label method. Okay, so let's try a quick thermochemical equations practice problem. And this is basically like doing stoichiometry, same thing. Um, so if we have 32 grams of O2, how much heat will be produced? Okay, so the first thing you're going to have to do, because we want to get to moles, right? Mol this, is, this is moles. So you're going to do um, grams of O2 to moles of O2. So we're going to have 32.3 grams of O2 over 1. And we'll, ha we'll be using the equality 1 mole O2 equals the molar mass of O2, which is 16.00 plus 16.00 or 32.00 grams of O2. And we'll put that in the grid, 32.00 grams O2 on the bottom. One mole O2 on the top. Grams and grams cancel out. So now that we've got to mole O2, we can use the, um, like the mole mole ratio, but this time we'll call it the mole energy ratio from the balanced equation to figure out the amount of energy produced. So we have moles of O2 to that much energy. Now, what does it mean? This here says negative 802 kilojoules. Why does it say neg negative 802.2 kilojoules? Well, because it's an exothermic reaction, which means that the energy goes on the product side. Okay, so now that's going to be our equality. Two mole O2 equals 802.2 kilojoules. So who's going to go on the bottom? Well, two mole O2, and on the top we'll go 802.2 kilojoules. Okay, and those cross out. Now all we have to do is multiply and divide. Okay, so when I multiply it across the top, I got a big old number here, 25911.06 kilojoules. And when multiplying across the bottom, I came up with 64. From there we divide, giving us 404.86 and so forth, kilojoules. Hmm, that doesn't fit. Kilojoules. Okay, now if we go back and look at sig figs, we have three sig figs, and here we have four, so we're gonna have three sig figs, so our final answer is gonna be 
kilojoules. So if you start with 32.3 grams of oxygen, you will be creating 405 kilojoules of energy. And that's all there is to it. Have a good one.